The government says its decision to shut down the country for at least the next four weeks was monumental, but one that was absolutely essential. From tomorrow, all bars, restaurants, cafes, gyms, cinemas, pools, museums, libraries and other public places where people gather have to close. School, schools will be mostly closed from tomorrow, except for the children of essential workers like doctors, nurses, ambulance drivers and police. But that will only be temporary. Schools and early childhood centres will be closed completely from midnight Wednesday. Education Minister Chris Hipkins says all the evidence says we should act now if we are to avoid the worst case scenario. Mr Hipkins is reiterating the call to stay calm about public uh, panic shopping. This was a, a monumental decision, a very, very big decision for the country um, and for the lives that New Zealanders live every day. Um, it's not a decision that the, the Cabinet took lightly. I think everybody appreciates the gravity of the situation. But actually we've also got to look at, at, at how bad it could get um, if we don't take these uh, measures now when we have the opportunity to try and stamp out COVID-19. Uh, we don't want to be in, in the position that other countries are in where they've got um, their, their, their health systems have been completely overrun um, and now they're potentially locked down for a lot longer than four weeks. So this is a, a very sensible measure by New Zealand to try and stamp out COVID-19 while we still can. Did you feel that weight while you were making this decision? Uh, absolutely. Look, I, 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 uh, I got the advice last night, late last night. I read it. I then spent most of the night staring out of the window uh, and contemplating that. Uh, I think every, every other minister around the Cabinet table today, and bearing in mind only half of them were there because the other half uh, were, were dialing in via teleconference. It's part of the, the new protocol that we've put in place. Uh, and in fact, that protocol will only last until uh, today anyway. Ministers are now going to be in self-isolation along with the rest of the country. We're working remotely as well. I think all of us felt the, the gravity of the situation. So when you say you got this advice last night, give us an idea. I mean, how many pages are you talking and what information was provided to you in order to make this decision? Um, look, I think it, it was a mix of um, uh, health advice on, on the justifications for doing this and, and the best people to answer questions about that are clearly the, the Director General of Health, the Minister of Health and the Prime Minister, uh, but also advice on, on what it would mean, um, what what we would do over the next 48 hours in order to uh, effectively get people home and get people staying home um, and of course what all the implications of that are. We've, we've still got to keep critical services going, we've still got to make sure that people are being paid, um, and we've still got to make sure that you know the, the supermarkets are open um, and that people are able to get food, we've still got to uh, make sure that you know all of the critical infrastructure that keeps the, the country running, the, the, the water's going to flow when the tap turns on, uh, the lights are going to come on when you, when you flick a switch, uh, all of those telecommunication services we rely on will still need to be provided, banking services will still mm. need to be provided. So it's about making sure that we can continue to do all of those things when the country is, is, is shut down as much as possible. On that note, Minister, the phones have not been working very well this afternoon. Obviously, they're being overloaded by people. What assurances can you give that the essential things are still going to keep ticking over? Look, a lot of work has gone into that over the last few weeks. We know that um, uh, as people shift from, from you know, working at work to working at home, uh, there will be some bumps in the road for that. Uh, obviously, I know the telecommunications companies are working as hard as they can to make sure that that's as smooth as possible. We are asking people for a bit of good faith here. Uh, but also, I guess the message here around telecommunications, it's the same as around food. I only do what you need to do. Don't panic. There is no need for panic. Um, just, you know, be sensible. So what are you most nervous or apprehensive about going into this now? Uh, look, I, I think like all New Zealanders, I think the, the, the prospect of being at home and being isolated for uh, an extended period of time is, is something that everybody will be pausing to think about. And, um, you know, members of the government, members of parliament, we're no different in that regard. We're also going to be going through this process. We'll be having all of the same emotions as, as other New Zealanders are. And I think my, my key message to everybody is, you know, let's stick together, um, although we're going to be physically apart. Um, you can still communicate with one another. Let's keep talking. Talking. Let's keep communicating with one another, um, and actually, you know, we will get through this. Uh, we, we can, we can make this work. We can, uh, we can recover. We can rebound, and we will. So, do you think there are some people out there who are simply not getting this though, and the gravity of the situation? 
Look, I think my message to everybody is this is a very serious situation. Everybody needs to take this very seriously. As the Prime Minister outlined today, the alternative is that we would we could potentially have tens of thousands of deaths in New Zealand. That's not something any New Zealander should be uh, willing to even contemplate. And so these measures are for the well-being of everybody. Everybody needs to play their part. So how are you going to ensure compliance then? Uh, look, I, I think those are questions um, best directed to Mike Bush, the Commissioner of Police, and others who will be coordinating uh, the enforcement side of this. Obviously, um, we want people to comply, and we will take action if people are not complying. What about all those people who don't have a home to go to? That They may be also um, the impoverished and the hungry. We always know that they are worst off in these kinds of situations, the hardest hit. What about them? Look, I know that community organisations, those community services providers, the housing providers are going to be working uh, as hard as they can to make sure that everybody has a place to go. Um, you know, like I said, um, this is going to be a bit of a bumpy 48 hours, but I know that people will be pulling out all the stops to make it happen. In terms of schooling then, when all these kids are at home, and do you envisage that lessons will start up, well, relatively normal on the internet? Because again, there are lots of families who simply do not have access to that as a tool. So we know from a number of schools that they have online capability at the moment. They can go online learning relatively easily and some of them will do that this week. Uh, we also know that there are uh, a significant number of kids who won't have easy access to that technology at home, either because they don't have the devices uh, or because the family doesn't have broadband in their house. So we have so will you over give the last... Free, will you make broadband available free of charge to kids who need to be taught from home and who do not have that? We have been working with the telecommunications companies over the last week or so to make sure that uh, if we get to that point where kids need to be learning from home, uh, that we can supply the technology uh, to make that happen. Uh, that includes the hardware and, of course, the access to, to broadband. You mean uh, we free, Minister? Make sure, Do you mean well, free? Look, I, uh, look, we're going to pull out all the stops to make sure it happens. If we need to make it free, then we will. Uh, we're, you know, we're working very hard with the telecommunications companies to do what we can. I know the telecommunications companies already, for example, are taking data caps off because that was one of the risks for us, that kids would be at home and they'd quickly hit their data caps and, then, uh, and that would be a problem. So the telecommunications companies are working incredibly hard with the government to make sure that we can uh, make online learning a possibility uh, as much as possible. So you're basically are assuring us today that if families are not able to afford broad broadband it will may be made available to them free of charge if look, necessary. Look I can't give you that reassurance at the moment what I can say is that we're working through all of the options we're working very hard we're working very fast uh, there's a lot of pressure as you can imagine there are some physical constraints that we have to uh, work through with the telecommunications companies including the you know the capacity of some of the networks particularly in more isolated areas so we're working really hard to get all of that work done as quickly as possible. What about those students who are in crucial years at school? They've got vital exams this year. Is that it? Is the year written off? No, the year's not written off. We're talking about a period of four weeks. Um, there are, of course, uh, you know, there's the potential. There's the potential to do things later in the year to help to make up uh, for that time that, that kids will be away from school at this part point in the year. Um, of course, it's going to depend how much disruption there is uh, one, you know, after this four-week period. And at this point, we, we don't know that. We can't uh, give uh, accurate answers on that. Um, so, look, it's, it's an evolving situation. And, and uh, you know, we, we'll do everything we can to, to minimise the amount of disruption to kids' education, particularly for those uh, who have exams and who have assessments and whose future really is, is riding on, uh, on being able to complete. What about households where they already have overcrowding and inadequate homes and they're now going to be stuck in those homes for four weeks, potentially more? What, what's been done for them? Uh, look, that's a question direct, best directed to the Minister of Housing. Obviously, my focus over the last couple of days has been on getting the education sec sector as prepared as possible for this to happen, and I know that that's been happening across government. As you can imagine, um, every minister, every official has been working around the clock to do that, and we haven't all had time to compare notes at this point. So I, I would really suggest that that is uh, some... Well, we've compared notes, but not in detail, so I really would suggest that that's something to direct to the Minister of Housing. Would you like to speak to the extension of the business package today, Minister? 
Look, I think the message to the business community is the same as it was last week. These are exceptional times. Um, the Minister of Finance has announced further measures today to support businesses through this, uh, to support workers through this, to ensure that there is still money coming through the door. We, uh, he's also been, been really frank as well. We will not be able to save every job. We will not be able to save every business. Uh, we want to soften the blow as much as we can, and that's what the Minister of Finance has, uh, you know, has, that's why he's taken further steps today to extend that business support package. So what is your message to New Zealanders as they prepare basically to retreat into their homes for at least a month? Uh, my message to New Zealanders is stay calm. This is an exceptional set of circumstances. I understand why people will be taking a moment to pause and to reflect and to wonder what all of this means for them. We're all in this together. Uh, we're all going to be uh, staying at home. We're all going to be working from home. We're all going to be having to think about things differently and to do things differently than we have in the past. People need to stay calm. Uh, there's no need to go out and panic buy. Uh, our food supply chains will stay open. Supermarkets will be staying open. We'll be making sure that happens. Um, people will still have the opportunity to go shopping and to pick up the essentials. They don't need to go and buy a whole month's worth of groceries all tonight. Uh, in a rush. If people make a sensible and they buy what they need for the next day or two, there will be enough for everybody. The supermarkets will have time to restock their shelves. That's one of the really critical messages. Please don't go out there and buy more than you need in the short term because that will mean that somebody else who needs needs something in the short term won't be able to get it. Uh, we will, You will be able to keep shopping at the supermarket. You will be able to keep uh, up with that uh, as we go through this next four weeks. And that's Education Minister Chris Hipkins.